Hello and welcome. In this video, I want to take a look at convex functions. So functions that either look something like this, which we could even call strictly convex, or like this, which we would just call convex. For illustrative purposes, we will not consider multivariable functions, but the following principles can be applied in the same way for this as well. With the first example here, in analysis, we often want to determine a function's derivative for all kinds of purposes. The first derivative of a function is often visualized as the slope of that function in the form of a tangent line. In the second example, however, we run into a small issue. For this exact point, we cannot find a single tangent that describes the slope of the function at this point. Therefore, the derivative here actually does not exist. An even simpler example is the function of the absolute value of x. At zero, we cannot determine the derivative of the function, since we could argue, coming from the left side, that it should be minus one, since we're always going down by one unit. Or similarly, coming from the right side, we could argue that it should be 1. We could however say that we can draw multiple tangent lines here that all fit the criteria of being fully below the function. Now to generalize this, we can define all these tangent lines in a set, but we don't need to remember the entire function definitions since only the slope actually changes. They all have to touch our function at 0. We will call this slope value lambda. And the condition for one of these tangents is that all of the function values should be above the tangent line. This set of lambda values is the definition of the subgradient, or sometimes also called subderivative. Now for another example, we can take a look at the function from earlier and ask what the subgradient here is. The function definition could look something like this, for example, with the function value being 2 for every x that is smaller or equal than 2, and just x for every x value larger than that. You can also try this example by yourself and then compare it to the solution presented here. We can plug this into our previously established generalization and after simplifying end up with three different cases. If x is larger than 2, lambda has to be smaller or equal than 1. If it is exactly 2, we get an equation that is true for any lambda value, so this does not restrict our result. If x is smaller than 2, lambda has to be larger or equal than 0. If we combine these three conditions, we end up with the closed interval of 0 and 1. Which makes sense if we try to visualize the tangent lines. I hope with this video I managed to give you a better understanding for this topic. If you have any additional questions or other topics you want me to cover, feel free to leave a comment. Thank you for watching, see you.